What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 108 of Mainly Heckin Sports. I'm your host, Carter Bruce, back again with another episode for y'all and um, doing what you guys asked. I asked you on via Instagram story if you guys wanted this Saturday's episode to be Super Bowl based or next Saturday. And I thought the kind of smart decision you guys made the smart decision was definitely this Saturday because we kind of have more time to go over the episode because it's not going to be that long. I'm not going to drag it out too long for you guys, probably 30 to 45 minutes uh, just covering how we got here, game plans, who has the advantages in certain areas, and my final prediction for who will win Super Bowl 56. Uh, I just thought this Saturday was perfect, so kudos to you guys. That's the reason why I ask you guys these questions is because you definitely – sometimes a lot smarter than I am. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys so much for taking the time to vote on that. Uh, I'm very excited for the Super Bowl. Um, you know, being a Patriots fan, it's not, it hasn't been very often in, you know, the 20 year stretch, 22 years now where the Patriots haven't been in the Super Bowl, where I have been this interested in the Super Bowl. Uh, I just feel like both teams are very likable. Uh, you can root for either team, you know, I certainly have my certain way of who I am rooting for, but I don't, I'm not going to let that get in the way of how I'm going to judge this game in terms of who has the advantages, who I think is going to win. This is truly my opinion and who I believe will win. No bias in who I, I, you know, the, the, who has the better story, and yada, yada, yada. I don't want to kind of that shit to get in and mess with my head. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, this guy's not playing the Super Bowl either. So, you know, it's going to be interesting. Uh, definitely didn't think that when we got to this point that it would be the Bengals and the Rams facing off against each other in the Super Bowl. I, I believe a lot of people maybe thought the, the Rams would be here, especially at the beginning of the season, but not the Bengals. Uh, Bengals have worked their ass off to get here, and so have the Rams. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed your week. I hope you guys enjoy the weekend. I know there's not uh, there's basketball really to enjoy, maybe some college basketball. <coughs> Excuse me, but. Next weekend is the time. Next weekend is the time. So this is just strictly, again, going to be Super Bowl content. So without any more rambling, without any more nonsense, let's just hop into it and how we got here. Starting with the Rams. Actually, let me take a, let me take a little drink of water before we go. Starting with the LA Rams, a team that was very hyped because this is a team that had been to the Super Bowl with Jared Goff and many believe that Matthew Stafford was a huge, huge upgrade, a huge, huge upgrade from Jared Goff in terms of being a more reliable quarterback. Obviously had he's, uh, his skills, his skill set is much higher and much you know wider than Jared Goff's. And a lot of people believe, you know, with Robert Woods, Cam Akers, and especially no one, uh, uh, nobody assumed that, Cooper Cup would ascend to the level he's at now, but they have that deadly defense, the D-line, secondary led by Jalen Ramsey, obviously the D-line led by Aaron Donald, picked up some guys along the way with some injuries with two Robert Woods, picked up OBJ, and um, picked up Von Miller as well, kind of throwing some stuff in there that I, I had written down already. That's just kind of how I go. I go off the whim, just kind of ruining what I had it kind of written down. But um, the Rams were very, very hyped. Uh, their big first matchup was the Buccaneers. It was week three <coughs> or week four. Uh, this was the Bucs were the defending champions, and everyone believed that this Rams team was going to be somewhat similar to the Saints team that they had faced the year prior. It was going to be their really their kryptonite. And they were right. They went out there, beat the shit out of the Bucs. And the Rams were really on a roll to start the season. Uh, they were really living up to that hype train at first through the eight games of the, uh, through the first eight games of the season. They were seven and one, only losing to the undefeated undefeated Arizona Cardinals. Uh, at that point, everybody had the Cardinals being the favorite, and we know what happened later on with the Cardinals. Specifically, I think that's the Cardinals' biggest win of their season, uh, beating this Rams team. Obviously, beating a team that's in the Super Bowl now, but um, seven and one. Definitely shows that you live up to the hype, but it can certainly get to your head when, you know, you are seven and one, you're really fulfilling. And Matthew Stafford had ascended to at the top of the MVP race. It was between him and Brady. Everybody thought obviously Derrick Henry before Derrick Henry got injured. Some of us threw him in there, but Matthew Stafford was definitely living up to the hype and to what they were expecting of him in Los Angeles with, you know, a much better defense and a much better, you know, much more weaponry on the offensive end. 
And then the Rams started to fall apart. And then they kind of started to look like the overhyped team. They started to look like the people hopped on that hype train way too fast. I was one of those people that just thought, okay, this Rams team, they actually stink. Like Matthew Stafford was falling apart. He was looking like the typical Lions. You know, Matthew Stafford, that defense was not looking good whatsoever. Robert Woods going out and only having Cooper Cup, obviously a very talented wide receiver in himself. They just didn't have enough on the offensive end to really challenge anybody to put up, point, you know, and really go out there and, battle with the best of the teams they lost three in a row uh they lost to the titans the packers the 49ers really got their asses kicked on you know all three games it 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 was just kind of showed everybody okay you know early on they competed with the bucks they beat the bucks and whoever who everybody had as the favorite to go to the super bowl in the nfc but now you lose the titans packers 49ers 49ers had kind of been on a skid they started off the season well and then lost a couple of games but the rams was kind of their bounce back game everybody thought it would be uh, but the Packers and the Titans, obviously, uh, uh, Packers, <clears throat> after their one bad loss to the Saints to start the season, had ascended to being one of the best teams in the NFL. And the Titans as well. They were up there. Everybody kind of thought they were si- semi-legit. And they turned out to be. They beat the, they beat the Rams. And they ended up getting the number one seed as the season went further. But uh, obviously losing to three very, very talented teams, you know, it's not the biggest, you know, cause of concern but you kind of look at it and go okay we're legit but how legit are we we've just lost three games in a row to teams that everybody believes can make the playoffs and will be higher seats specifically with the titans of the packers so they moved on they acquired like i said obj and von miller in week 10 for trade deadline they kind of wanted to get some guys in there robert woods being out he's a huge piece to be missing so getting obj especially getting him out of cleveland and we all know that it's kind of added up to and the, the, the smart people knew that Baker Mayfield and Cleveland was the problem. They were, it's just a complete shit show there. And OBJ kind of went over to, they, he went over, adapted this role. He's the number two guy to Cooper cup and he's loving it. And he's doing a phenomenal job at it and still has throughout, you know, through the super up to the super bowl. Now Von Miller kind of started off slow, but he bounced back. He's, you know, played very, very well the last six, seven weeks of football when you include the playoffs and they bounced back to win five games in a row after that three game skid. Uh, they were beating teams left and right. They were really kind of, you know, setting up a record where you're looking at a 12 and a 12 and four record now. Very, very impressive because you're up there with the best of them. You know, you obviously you're in a com- very competitive division with the Cardinals who started off very good but they just completely fell apart and nobody thought, including myself, that the Rams would beat the Cardinals out for the division. And you have the 49ers who are also in the playoff race up to that point. They're kind of fighting for that last playoff spot. And then it's the Rams and Cardinals battling back and forth to see who will be a top four seed. And who knows where the, the Rams would be at this point, if maybe they had not gotten the home field advantage, not specifically against Arizona, because we know what happened against Arizona. And we know that they were the much better team than Arizona, but if they were to face somebody else, if they would have fallen to the, who knows? Who knows? Just genuinely, who knows? Maybe they fell to the six where they have lost to the Cowboys. No, maybe fall into the seven being, at, uh, you know, at Tampa, wouldn't, have, you know, or in the, in the wild card wouldn't have been as favorable possibly who knows, but they ended up going, uh, they ended up hosting Arizona wild card round blew them out. Um, Arizona was on their last legs. Kyler Murray had been injured. Uh, What's his nuts? The guy who had a terrible season, but he's a phenomenal wide receiver. DeAndre Hopkins. I don't know how I forgot that for a second. Uh, was injured just coming back, and you know JJ Watt was activated, and it just didn't do anything. The Arizona Cardinals got the, their shit kicked in. The Rams really just made a statement. Matthew Stafford. He had been winless in the playoffs thus far, so everybody's wondering. Okay, you know this is really where you make a name for yourself. Can Matthew Stafford? Does he have the nuts? Does he have the moxie? Uh, old boomer word. My grandma, my grandfather always used to say the moxie to go in here in the playoffs, defeat a division rival, no matter how bad of a skid the Arizona Gar- Cardinals are on. It's the playoffs. It's a completely different game. Uh, everybody starts off fresh because it's not like you lose and you can bounce back next week. You lose one and you're done. So it doesn't mean, you know, a team that you could beat nine, uh, nine out of 10 times, you can run into that one time and then you're done. After beating the Arizona Cardinals, they were going up against Tampa Bay and Tampa Bay, the team that they had beaten very handily, the, cl- the score in the regular season was not really a very telling of how the actual matchup went in the regular season. It was a blowout. The Rams beat the, beat the shit out of Tom Brady and the Bucks. And I had the Buccaneers favorite. A lot of people had the Buccaneers favorite to win this game being at home. Tom Brady doesn't really lose all that much at home. Uh, 
And, and it's very difficult to beat Tom Brady in the playoffs. And for Matthew Stafford, you know, everybody's saying, okay, he had one good game, but can he have another good game? Because, you know, one game doesn't make you. One game doesn't get you to the Super Bowl. One game doesn't, you know, immortalize you in the Hall of Fame. It's all about, con- you know, overcoming controversy, overcoming adversity. And really, this is where we saw Matthew Stafford and the Rams take off. They built up a huge, huge 20-point lead over the Bucs. They were completely dominating them. And then it seemed to really come back on them. And what we saw in the three-game skid, we saw in certain games in that five-game win streak, guys, which I had failed to mention, some of those wins weren't that good-looking wins. They blew big leads and they ended up winning in the end, or they just were down a bunch and came back and won. It, that Not every single win they had of their 13 in the regular season, and their 12 in the regular season, excuse me, were phenomenal wins, were very impressive wins, were something that you would you know, brag about uh, at the office on Monday, at the water cooler. Uh, it, it just really wasn't. It was something that you know, here and there you kind of go, oh, yeah, okay, the Rams look kind of good. And then you look at them and go, okay, they, they, the Rams stink. Even in a win, it looks like they absolutely stink. And this is where we started to see the, t- the same Rams, the same Matthew Stafford, and, you know, and, and not saying that Matthew Stafford was bad in the divisional game because he absolutely wasn't, but it was just he was very – meh in that second half he really wasn't doing all that much and maybe because it was Sean McVay and the offense they were calling they're really trying to slow the game down keep the bucks off the field but they were fumbling the ball you know Cooper Cup was fumbling Cam Akers was fumbling everybody was fumbling the fucking ball and it was nuts blew that lead Tom Brady came back tied the game up and everyone's thinking okay here we go we're going into overtime Tom Brady is going to take down the Rams and it's just going to be a bust of a season because when this team was built it was championship or bust because you really threw everything you had out the window to get Matthew Stafford. You got rid of Goff, a guy who had brought you to the Super Bowl before. And it was, it's not enough to win your division. It's not enough to be up 20 points in a divisional round over the box. You had to win this game. You had to go to the NFC Championship. You had to win that game. You have to go to the Super Bowl. You have to win that game. You have to win four playoff games for this team, for this season, to be looked at as a success. There's nothing to build upon here besides a championship. So everybody was thinking, okay, this is going to crumble. This is just where, this is where everything's falling apart. This is where everything, just the Rams are really showing their face. And we were wrong. Matthew Stafford went out there, two quick passes, Cooper Cup, set him up for the game-winning field goal. Matt Gay made it. They're on to the NFC Championship. And now here is my thing about them going in the NFC Championship. You have the 49ers, 6-0 and against the Rams in the last, obviously, six games they had played. Jimmy Garoppolo, even though he had not played well, has been very, very good in the playoffs in terms of record-wise. And they just had their number. They completely – sorry, guys, someone keeps FaceTiming me. Just going to keep that over there. But – Everyone's thinking, okay, but the 49ers, myself, I predicted the 49ers to win. This is the time where Matthew Stafford loses it. And it was looking like that, much again like it was second half. When the Buccaneers caught up, it was looking like the Rams were done. They just weren't able to get anything going on the offensive end. Matthew Stafford had that early interception, and I was thinking, okay, maybe I predicted here. Excuse me, I just knocked, almost knocked over my water and my light. Let me fix that real quick, knocking everything over. And I was like, okay, here we go. The typical Matthew Stafford game, he's going to throw a couple picks. This game's just not going to be good because that 49ers team, that offense led by Debo Samuel, Elijah Mitchell, George Kittle, is, even with Garoppolo, very, very good. That defensive line, very, very good. The uh, 49ers collectively were stacked. Just that quarterback position is what held them back. But Garoppolo threw that touchdown to George Kittle. They're up 17-7 in the fourth quarter. And here came the Rams. Matthew Stafford came up clutch yet again, led them all the way, scored 13 unanswered points in the fourth quarter, won the game, and moved on to the Super Bowl. So what we learned about this Rams team is they lived, they, they lived up to the hype. They thrive in the big moments, and they're ready for anybody. They can get punched in the mouth, and they're going to battle back. They really overcame a lot of adversity during the season, in which a lot of people – Again, I will say, including myself, because as if you guys listen to this, you'll have heard me say it many times, said they stunk. And at one point, yes, they did, but they bounced back. That's what great teams do. They bounce back. They 
really thrive in which everybody be- when the, at the moment everybody believes that they're at their worst. Everybody believes that they're done. And that's how we got this year's Rams. And they're going to be looking to not make this a very close game, but I can tell you one thing for certain. They're not overlooking the Bengals because of what we'll get into with the Bengals and what they have done this season. So no better introduction than just to talk about the fucking Bengals and what they've done. They start off the season five and two. They lost to the Bears and the Packers. The Bears is still a very, very confusing loss. Uh, even though Joe Burrow, very, very impressive in that Bears game, throwing three straight interceptions on three pass attempts, just shows how big a nuts Joe Burrow has. He doesn't give a shit about throwing interceptions. But here is where it got really confusing because everyone's thinking, okay, the Bengals, the, the, the weird team we didn't think would be legit, but they're five and two. Yes, they lost to the Bears. Everyone's going to have that kind of game, and they lost to the Packers. Packers are the most favorable team in the NFC, but then they lose to the Jets. 34 to 30. They just lose to the Jets. Everyone's thinking, okay, okay, they just had one of those games, but but they had that against the Bears. And okay, maybe they can bounce back because, you know, the young, very young team, you know, got second year quarterback, rookie wide receiver, fourth year running back, and T. Higgins in his second or third year. Very, very young team. And then they get blown out by the Browns, 41 to 16. Now, where they were sitting at five and two, now they're sitting at five and four. And they're in a division with the Ravens, the Browns, who just demolished them, and the Steelers. The Ravens were the most favored to win that division. The Ravens started off the season very, very well. And it's just kind of looking, even with the extra playoff spot, not very good for the Cincinnati Bengals. So starting off 5-2, and two, it's the typical Bengal way in the last two decades to start off hot. And then when the, the light shines the brightest on them, they crumble. But then they started winning games here and there. They started, you know, they, they blew out the Raiders and they beat the Steelers, beat the Ravens, beat the Broncos, lost a couple games here and there. And the games that, you know, maybe they could have won, but their big win against Kansas City where they came back. And then they clinched the division. They closing out that season, you know, the season five and three, finishing the regular season 10 and seven. A lot better than what a lot of people expected, especially when they fell to five and four. This Bengals team, everyone's thinking, okay, they won a division. They have a favorable matchup going into the wild card round. Maybe they can make some noise. You know, definitely, I, I, I thought anybody that believed the Raiders could beat the Bengals was kind of nuts. Uh, I, I just thought that the Bengals overall were the much better team uh, offensively and defensively. The Raiders have just been far too inconsistent for me. I, I know you can say that the, the Bengals lost to the Jets. They lost to the Bears, but... I still believe in Burrow more than I do Derek Carr. And I still believe in, uh, you know, the, the guys they have on the offensive end and Mixon, Chase and Higgins than I do, it, you know, just what Waller and Renfro. Am I going to take those two over the other three supporting casts over in Cincinnati? I'm, I'm not, I'm just not. And on the defensive end specific, you know, Max Crosby, very, very good defender, uh, you know, very good D lineman, but I'm taking the Bengals overall because they they have a much better strength on the defensive end than what the Raiders ever had. Their run defense was phenomenal and they could pressure the quarterback from time to time. Yes, the O-line for the Bengals is very, very sketchy, and that's maybe why some people were picking the Raiders because it would present some problems for Joe Burrow, but went out there and got got the W. They beat the Raiders in the divisional round. uh, Sorry, in the wild card round, and everybody knew that without New England beating Buffalo that they were going to face Tennessee. I'm on record saying Tennessee's one of the worst one seeds of all time. Even Derrick Henry coming back, he's not going to be fully healthy. I just don't see how this really is in the Titans' favor. I see the Bengals riding high, beating the Raiders. I think they can easily beat this Titans team. Uh, Obviously, it wasn't going to be a very easy game, but Derrick Henry's not 100%. So where here am I missing that the Bengals can't compete in this game? You know, I, I love Big Cap, but him saying that the Titans could, are going to blow out the, 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 the are going to blow out the Bengals was nuts to me. I don't like to question Big Cat because Big Cat, he's someone I look up to. But it was just an all-time stupid, stupid call. This Bengals team very, very talented. Yes, it was you know nineteen to sixteen game, and they ended up winning on a last-second field goal. Burrow got sacked nine times, which was nuts. You know, no quarterback should be able to win a game or bounce back from nine sacks and then just drive him down the field and win the game in the end. Obviously, their rookie kicker McPherson is psh, kid's got the third biggest set of nuts in the on the planet, on the planet. 
I guess you can say second biggest now that Tom Brady's retired. Burrow shoots up to number one. But they beat this Titans team. They kind of impress a lot of people along the way, but then they're going up against the Chiefs where everybody's saying, well, it's the Chiefs. You know, they're everybody's favorite to go to the Super Bowl. No way that the Bengals have a shot in this game. A lot of people overlooking them, which I loved. I, I love picking against the Chiefs. I love, you know, I, I thought, you know, maybe the Chiefs shouldn't even been there. They should have lost to the Bills, but should have, could have, would have. The Bills couldn't close it. So I thought, okay, here comes Joe Burrow, JB9, Joe Cool. And they're going to beat, they're going to beat the Chiefs. They're going to beat the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes because I believe that they are riding at an all time high. They're honestly, they're pissing excellence. When they wake up in the morning, especially Joe Burrow, you know, they beat the Chiefs early in the season. The Chiefs had that lead. They, they understood that the Chiefs weren't indestructible because normally when the Chiefs have a double-digit lead on you, the game's over. But they came back in the regular season, so falling behind early, even though, yes, it was very scary to me seeing the 21-3 to lead, and I, was, I tweeted out, I was like, I'm an, I'm an idiot for thinking that any, this game would be remotely close. Pastor Mahomes just looked too good. Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey looked too good. And the Bengals just weren't looking like anything to me. They were just making – routine mistakes and they come down make it 21 10 Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs bonehead play don't take the field goal they go for the touchdown get shut down now we're going to that second half excuse me guys this I swear to god I itch my nose maybe twice a day before I record and then when I record it's fucking all-time itch anyway <clears throat> And we saw the Bengals defense turn it up like no other defense has turned it up before against Patrick Mahomes. You know, arguably you can say this pa- the Patriots in that, in that first half of the AFC uh, championship game back in 2017, but they turned it up to another level. Held Mahomes to 54 yards, no touchdowns, two picks in the second half and overtime. Came back from that 21 to 10 deficit, led 24 21, almost shut them down from, you know, put them at a, at a field goal range. It was a 44 yard field goal, which is routine for their kicker. And it was phenomenal going to overtime. Obviously they didn't die by tails. They tried to die by heads. And it just wasn't, well, you got, you, I swear you guys aren't getting a pick, a pick in the flick. You're not getting it on camera. Absolutely not. But they won. This is what I'm trying to get to. They beat the chiefs, battled back, they showed nuts. They made the game winning field goal in overtime and they were moving on to L.A. And I just think that the Bengals are riding on this all-time high. They are pissing excellence. I will say, I, I had to repeat it. There's the, it's the best Ricky Bobby line. Just wake up and piss excellence. Joe Burrow, the chains are real. I'm sorry, I keep me and shit, guys, and keep moving all around. The, the, the nose itch is, all t- is throwing me off. It's, it's absolutely insane. But that's how we got here. That's how we got to a Cincinnati Bengals. LA Rams Super Bowl, Super Bowl 56. It's very, very interesting. And then you go into these advantages because everybody's always dissecting, okay, who has the better what here? Who has, you know, who's more reliable here? Where can we kind of rank and say, okay, this is the reason why this team would win. This is the reason why this team will win. This is the reason why this team has a chance. This is the reason why this team will blow this, you know, whatever out. And I'm going to break it down. Not specifically position by position in terms of quarterback, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, O-line, D-line, linebackers, secondary, special teams, and then a couple fun ones in there because I don't want to be too boring for you guys. Because while I'm trying to be, you know, kind of put some actual, you know, seriousness into this, I do want to have some fun. So quarterback, I'm going to go through all of these, and I'm going to say who I believe has the advantages in terms of who would you, who can you may, not just specifically rely on, but who would more people choose to have? Quarterback. This one was probably the toughest one for me because as much as I love Joe Burrow, I love Joe Burrow. Came in, comeback player of the year, looking absolutely phenomenal. Nuts of steel, biggest, biggest set of nuts. And pause because I held it right up there, but in the NFL, coolest quarterback possibly of all time he's he is one you know if they do win the super bowl he will thief joe montana's name nickname joe cool and the reason why i lean toward i i I, as much as i love joe burrow i lean towards giving the advantage to the rams is because you know matthew stafford obviously has the better opportunity 
to win MVP. He's favorited MVP. He was at a better regular season than Joe Burrow. And, you know, maybe if Joe Burrow, this wasn't his second year and he had more games under his belt, I would say him. And, you know, people can say, okay, well, they have this almost, they have the same amount of playoff wins. Both have three. Yes. It's just Matthew Stafford is the veteran. He just has in terms of which we'll get into later, better weapons. And I think you just, in certain times like this, you lean towards the veteran than the new guy on the block. Certain times. And I'm not saying that this is who I would go with 10 times out of 10. This is literally a 5.1 to 4.9 that I'm leaning towards Matthew Stafford over Joe Burrow in terms of having the advantage. Is this who I would rather have personally? We won't get into that. No, it's not, but... It's just the advantage, you have to admit it. But the running backs is a different story. Obviously, it's the Bengals. You're, you're nuts to say if, if you think Cam Akers is better than Joe Burrow, you're nuts to me. I, I think uh, this is Joe Burrow. <laughs> Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon. I believe Joe Mixon to be one of the best running backs in the NFL. Very good dual threat running back. I lean towards him over Cam Akers, even though a lot of people are big Cam Akers uh, supporters. I do lean more towards Joe Mixon. Now the wide receivers. Who would I rather have in terms of the duos, OBJ and Cooper Cup or Higgins and Chase? I think combine the two. You just say, okay, you have to, you know, obviously Cooper Cup is the best of all four of them, you know, by far. But Jamar Chase is phenomenal. Higgins is better than OBJ, in my opinion. So while I'd say, okay, if I have to take two, I just can't take one, I would take Cincinnati's. But just Cooper Cup is just phenomenal. He's the best wide receiver in football. You have to give the advantage to whoever has the best of that situation. And that is clearly the Rams because they have the best in the NFL. It's plain and simple. The tight ends is kind of iffy here because both guys are injured. Higby for the the Rams and then uh, Usman's up. Sorry if I pronounce, I'm I'm terrible with names, guys. So you guys know this by now. It's nothing new to you that I am completely shit in pronouncing names. And if you guys hear pauses, I'm drinking water. I'm staying hydrated. You got to get the, you got to get the visuals to get this kind of stuff. Hydration is key. But tight ends is kind of a tie because guys are injured. Not really, you know, Nothing really to talk about much there with guys being injured. O-line, I think you're blind if you think it's not the Rams. I mean, yes, the, the, the Bengals did do a very, very good job in protecting Joe Burrow, uh, not allowing a sack. But I just think it's Rams clear, you know, clear as day. You look at the regular season stats, and it was just – it was mayhem for Joe Burrow, absolute mayhem. And everybody knows that that's their one weakness, and that's O-line. D-line, again, you're blind if you don't think it's the Rams because they have Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald – Probably best defensive player on the planet. He's not going to win defensive player. That he shouldn't win defensive player of the year over TJ Watt, but best defensive player on the planet, most people would say. So you have to lean towards the Rams. Linebackers. I think I kind of have a tie. I know you have uh, Vaughn Miller on the Rams side. So maybe you go there, but I'm just going to tie because I don't, I don't really care about any of the other linebackers. The Bengals have a solid squad. Rams, Vaughn Miller, okay, but I'm going to go with the tie because overall, linebackers just just don't do it for me. They don't do it for me. I like to see in, you know, a little Ray Lewis, Brian Urlacher kind of vibes, and, you know, it's another guy just to line up there next to him, you know, kind of like that Clay Matthews, A.J. Hawk. (laughs) I'm I'm just spitting bullshit at this point, guys, because, you know, people are going to think I'm nuts for not paying attention to the linebackers, you know, specifically, but I just couldn't do it. I looked at it and I was like, okay, I don't really care about any of these linebackers. 100% my fault, but what are you going to do? Secondary again, blind as day. If you don't think it's the Rams, Jalen Ramsey, possibly best cornerback in the NFL. So I, I, I just think it is there. Eli, and when you have Eli Apple on your team, there's your sign. But now, Special teams, actually, before we get into the fun things. Special teams, it's very hard because the, you know, Matt Gay, interesting name, 
He's not a guy, though. I know I'm not a big Matt Gay guy. Johnny Hecker. Love the last name. Hecker. It's a, it's a hit home. Hit, it hits home for me as this being mainly Hecken sports. Hecker, Hecken. See where I'm going there? I, I, I like it. I, I love the energy that the name brings to the table. But when I hear that a kicker, a rookie kicker, goes out there and says, we're going to the AFC Championship, and I know damn well he said something about going to the Super Bowl. Again, he, there may have been little Bambi shits jangling in his pants, but I know he definitely said something to somebody. I have to go with the Bengals. Clear advantage when you got the guy who just goes out there and predicts it. You know, Johnny Hecker, he can go out there and blast the 60, 70-yard punt, but that's not going to win the game like, Mc, like Evan McPherson can do. So I lean towards the Bengals. Give me McPherson all day over Gay. It's just me. Not that I hate Matt Gay. I just think he's not a guy. Now, the, kind of the, the, the more fun things, okay? We're going to go through Swagger, BDE in the big moment, a guy off, the it factor, and more deserving. Swagger, clearly, clearly JB9 in the Bengals. If, if you think otherwise, you're nuts. The, the, the ice is real. He makes too much money for the ice not to be real. Yes, I, I get it. OBJ, OBJ be dressing. The guy be dressing. He's got the, uh, some phenomenal cleats as well. Jalen Ramsey, he be dressing. JB9, the, the absolute, there's just the, the fit before the AFC championship game, best fit of the year. Chain, phenomenal chain. Press conference, phenomenal. Joe Burrow just hits home for everybody. The glasses, the n- turtleneck, the chain, it, everything just goes together perfectly. Joe Burrow just wraps it all together like a pre- and then just presents it so perfectly that you have to give the swagger to JB9. BDE in the big moment. If you don't know what BDE is, kids cover your ears. It's big dick energy. I was going to say nuts in the big moment but i kind of felt like that was kind of <laughs> kind of even though i just said it i just kind of felt funny typing out and you know i obviously wasn't going to fully type i just had to abbreviate bde didn't have to explain myself but kind of felt i had to get a little backstory in terms of what i was going to pick here for okay who has the bigger set of kahunas when it comes down to the big moment and i had to go tie here i had to go a tie the reason i had to go to a tie is because just the way, you know, both teams have come up clutch. Divisionals, AFC, NFC championship games, teams came up clutch. I can't say that Matthew Stafford isn't about it when it comes down to the big moment. I can't say that Joe Burrow isn't about it when it comes to the big moment. Evan McPherson, Matt Gay made a walk off. So I can't really side with one over the other. I think both have BDE in the big moment equally equally have BDE. These guys are, you know, they're like magnets. They're just so similar in that moment that they just retract. Not one can surpass the other. But we go to a guy off. If you don't know what a guy off is, I know it may sound a little weird, may sound a little funny, rolling off the tongue, may sound a little sus. I don't think I have to throw a pause in here. I think we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Hydrate again, you know, World, World Series champions, Braves, 2021, 2022 coming soon. A guy off is a big thing, kind of ripping off of uh, part of my take. And um, throwing this in there because I think it's just very it, – it, the Rams. I'm, I'm just not even going to explain myself. The Rams win the guy off. A guy off is you go back, you know, back and forth with names, say, hey, this – this like Joe Burrow, Matthew Stafford, Jamar Chase, Cooper Cup, T. Higgins, OBJ, Evan McPherson, Aaron Donald, Joe Mixon, Johnny Hacker, phenomenal last name, Hacker. Just kind of bounce back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you run out of names. And the Rams, I think, clearly win that. They win, they win that competition. Now, while I love the Bengals, it's just clear. It's clear that the guy off goes to the Rams. But now we go to the it factor, and it's the Bengals. As clear as day as the guy off is with the Rams, it factor, clear as day with the Bengals. Joe Burrow, 
the JB9, Joe Burrow, again, coolest quarterback in the NFL. Absolute boy. I have has the it factor, has the the ability to be the face of the NFL. Love it. Love Burrow. Need more of Burrow. And they win the it factor. And the more deserving. More deserving, I kind of went to both the team and the fans. And I think clear as day, it's the Bengals. Because you have LA, fair weather fans. LA fans deserve nothing. LA fans, I don't, I, I, I'm sorry. I have a friend, Brooklyn, who's a Dodgers fan. I'm sure she's a Rams fan too. Who knows? Yeah, Brooklyn, you deserve nothing. For as a fan, you deserve absolutely nothing. Uh, do, uh, you know, if you're Dodgers, Lakers, Clippers, anything, you're a, you're the worst fan base on the entire planet. Nobody, half of the fans that were there didn't give a shit about the Rams four or five years ago. They're fair weather fans. LA fans always has have been. Team, very deserving. OBJ, very deserving. Matthew Stafford, very deserving. Jalen Ramsey, very deserving. Aaron Donald, very deserving. Von Miller has already won one, but he still is very deserving. But the Bengals, Jesus. One of 12 teams in the NFL still to this day that have not won a Super Bowl. I don't know how, how much further you want me to dive deep into that, but I think that's clear as day why the Bengals are more deserving. So if you add these up, guys, we look at it here. Rams one point with the quarterbacks. Bengals one point with the running backs. Rams second point with the right receivers. Bengals and the Rams both get a point with tight ends. O-line, D-line goes the Rams. Both get a point in terms of linebackers. Rams get the secondary, then the Bengals get the special teams and the swagger. Both get teams get a tie with the BDE in the big moment. Guy off goes to the Rams. Bengals get the most deserving and it factor. So it's nine to eight. And this is why this, this is simple science, simple math, and simple procedure in terms to find out who the favorite's going to be. And that's why the point line, I don't care if it was in Guadalajara, if it was in Orno, Maine. Very random. Yes, I know. I'm going to you know, say this is probably the most random place anybody can think of when they're outside of Maine. The Rams are going to be the favorite. Simple. Nine to eight. They could have, you know, you, you really could use this system for any game. Go down this list if you, and you can, you know, you can configure it. You can alter it to any sport you had, but. What must stay consistent is swagger, BDE, guy off, it factor, and most deserving, and you can figure out who's going to be the favorite. Now, it does not exactly say how many points by, but what you can say is by, I would say, each finger determines three points. Rams, favored by three. Just saying. Kind of works out, guys. If you, if you really just look back, go back to some of the biggest games, run through this, see what the point line was, and tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. Now, there may be some certain adjustments. Maybe you could be doing the math a little bit wrong. So if you tell me I am wrong, I'm going to assume that you cannot do math. Now we go to the game plan. For the Rams, I think it's clear as day. Pressure Joe Burrow. Keep him inside the pocket. Take him down when you have the, op when you have the opportunity. We know the Titans, they got to him nine times, so we know that they can battle back and Joe Burrow can, you know, he got pressured by Chris Jones in the AFC Championship, broke away and got a couple big third down runs. That's why you want to keep him inside the pocket because he can get first downs with his feet. But you got to pressure him because he will try and throw the ball away. They can make mistakes. He's a very young quarterback, as great as, you know, as big a nuts as he has. People are going to make mistakes in the big moments when they're young. But the Rams, they got to bring pressure to Burrow, have to absolutely bring that pressure. And they have to, on the offensive end, attack the short routes. Slants in any route across the middle is difficult for the Bengals to cover because of that of their linebackers. You know, Cooper Cup, and then you know what we saw against the the Chiefs is those little short routes were easy for them to pick up first downs. You know, when you in need of a first down, run a quick slant, run a quick eight yard out, something just to really get the blood flowing. Because you have, the, you have the weapons to really make it seem like you're going to go deep down the field. And when you really have them focused on the short routes, then, then you can go deep with Cooper Cup. Then you can go deep with OBJ. And you really start the game off slow. You start the game off really just picking away at them seven, eight yards at a time. And then you go for the big play. And that's what we've seen teams do to them. Like the Chiefs, they just, 
expanded, expanded drives, and it slowed the Bengals down a lot. It really made it hard for the defense to stop them. It made it hard for the defense, especially if you're okay. If you're able to do this and your defense goes out, puts pressure on Burrow, sacks him a couple times, and then the Bengals defense is back out in the field, it really opens up a lot. Really opens up a lot. A second one, run the play action. The Bengals, as we know, that front line, they can get to the quarterback, and the rush defense hat was very, very, very good in the, in the regular season. You know, the Rams can run the ball from time to time, but if they can get that going, if they can get that established, if they can really keep that pressure off Matthew Stafford, and they can make the Bengals think they're going to run the ball a lot more than they thought, it can open up a lot later for the running game when you need to slow the game down. When you have a, when you have a touchdown lead and you have the ball, when they're expecting you to continue to throw the ball, it's, it's, it's a lot like what they did against the Tampa Bay Bucks, but they just can't overdo it. When they had that big lead and they were running the ball, they just can't overdo it. You know, there's going to be times where this play action is going to be utilized for Matthew Stafford to make those big plays. And then later on for him to make those short plays when it's second and seven and they just need a quick first down, you know, third and four, they need that first down. You can't run every single time like they did against the Bucks. That's what got them into trouble. And then lastly, make everybody else beat you. That isn't Jamar Chase. That's what everybody's been trying to do. I know it's very difficult. I know he got a very clutch touchdown against the Chiefs, but you just have to live with it. You have to live with any, anybody else beating you. If you lose at the end of the day and you look at Jamar Chase's stat lines, two for 20 yards and zero touchdowns, you live with it. You take it. But you cannot let this guy have the game where he has 11 for 202 touchdowns because that is where you really find yourself down bad. And now when we go to the Bengals, you have to capitalize off of any mistakes Matthew Stafford's going to make. Convert to touchdowns, not field goals, because the Rams can score quickly, as we've seen in the playoffs and many times in the regular season. Matthew Stafford has not made many mistakes during this playoff run. He has one interception to his name, but he will make mistakes. You just have to capitalize off that. We saw the 49ers when they had that easy. It was literally like a rainbow, like a punt to that guy's hands, and he dropped it. It would have won the game. The Bengals cannot afford to make the same mistakes the 49ers did, and they cannot go you know, charge down the field and only get field goals because the Rams will score eventually. You can only hold them off for so long. So when Matthew Stafford makes a mistake, you have to intercept that ball. You have to capitalize off that interception or that fumble. It has to be a touchdown, not a field goal. Put up the most points possible against a very deadly Rams offense. Second, get the run game going early. You have to give Burrow a lot more time in the pocket because the Ram, you know, the, the Bengals. Joe Mixon, yes, he can catch the ball very well, but he can also run. We saw him, what he did in the overtime drive against the Chiefs to move him down and getting 10, 12, you know, eight, seven, and a minimum five, six yards. And just what you need from time to time, you know, make the Rams focus a little bit more on the run game. So that way they're not pressuring every single time at the quarterback. And, you know, if you're beating them on the run, you're certainly going to beat them on the pass. You're going to make them double, you know, they're, you're going to really make them think twice about pressuring you. And they're going to be thinking about the run game that opens up the field a lot more for Joe Burrow. And it really gives him that extra second he's going to need. Third, figure out a way to get Jamar Chase involved. I think you need at least 80 plus yards and a touchdown from Jamar Chase to win this game. I think, you know, even being more realistic, you need triple digits from Jamar Chase to win this game. It's going to be very difficult because he's going up against Jalen Ramsey. But if you're the Bengals, you got to find a way. Obviously, you know, you can say, oh, well, they get, they're going to have to live with it. You know, they won the game against the Chiefs and he only had 56 yards, but certain circumstances, it's not going to work back to back games against some of the best teams in the NFL. In my personal opinion, I think, yes, I read off, let anybody beat you for the Rams, let anybody beat you, but Chase, obviously the Bengals, I'm going to be saying the opposite. Lastly, eliminate, and it's same point I made for the, uh, for the Rams, eliminate their best wide receiver, and that's Cooper Cup. You have to double him on third and long situations. I don't care. Any third down situation, double Cooper Cup because they know he's the most reliable, best wide receiver in the game, and he has a way of catching the ball or getting the ball when they need him in the most dramatic situations. You need to completely eliminate him from the game plan. You need to completely dominate him off the line. 
and you have to have always you always have to have that second guy there because Cooper Cup cannot beat you. He cannot have a multi touchdown hundred plus yard game, or it's gone. It's done. It's over with. It's over with. And that takes me to the prediction. How we got here, the advantages, the game plan takes us to this, the prediction. I know I had the Rams being nine to eight in terms of advantages. I have, I think the Rams have the better overall team. Again, they win the guy off easily. They definitely have a more impressive how we got here. When you run down that list, they obviously have the better record. But I'm rolling with the Bengals. I've picked the Bengals three times in the playoffs. I'm 3-0 with the Bengals. Really loving what Joe Burrow's doing. and I'm going to ride with them. I'm riding with the Cincinnati Bengals, and it's going to be a weird score. I wanted it to be a weird score. Going 27-25. And I know you're thinking, okay, Explain to us how the hell you're getting 27 to 25. And here's what I'm thinking, guys. 24-17. Rams have the ball. They're obviously down. A uh, 24-18, sorry. Nah, no. <laughs> I'm completely reading shit wrong. 20, yeah, 24-17. I had it right. I was just, I was just double checking my math. Again, once you once you're done school, math completely goes out the window. No matter how much you remembered in college, you think you could ace a test, you're gonna absolutely fail. You're gonna get a zero after college. But 24-17, Rams have the ball, say six minutes left. They go down, score with about three minutes left, maybe two. Sean McVay, his greedy little ass, is going to be thinking, do I want to be the coach that goes for the tie? Do I want to be the coach that goes for the win? So we go to overtime. We got we got JB9 over there. We got Evan McPherson over there. I believe in my defense. I think if we get that one point lead, we can shut him down. Goes for it. And they get it. Looks like a genius. It's 25-24. Rams. And Joe Burrow, as he has his head down, looks up into what, you know. Tony Romo in his soft, soft, quiet brain says he's going to go down there. He's going to go up. Evan McPherson say, I'm going to get us in position. We're going to have that Tom Brady Vinatieri moment. We're going to win this fucking game. Charge down the field. Evan McPherson kicks them into the afterlife. The Bengals win Super Bowl 56. That's my prediction. I'm sticking to it. That's all I got for you guys this episode. Cutting it off just like this. You guys can listen to this on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts. Uh, check it out on uh, the SportsWave uh, YouTube channel. Uh, thank you guys so much for voting on this, for this episode to be strictly about Super Bowl content. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you think I am absolutely insane uh, with my prediction. I know 27-25, probably stupid prediction. We could be very high scoring. We could be very low scoring. Who knows? All we can do is hope for a good game. Uh, let me know who you guys think is going to win. And I want to know the score. I don't want this. I think this team's going to win. And then you message me after and say, oh, I knew the score was going to be this. No, you fucking didn't. Tell me what the score is going to be before. I'll believe you. If anybody gets somewhat close, we'll figure something out in terms of a giveaway. But I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. I, I may be insane, but see you guys at 109.